hello guys good day so uh, today we're going to be talking about the uh, uses of polygraph testing this will be part of the first lecture on the unit 2 sa subject natin lie detection techniques so uh, we have here the topic na, the uses of polygraph testing as as part of of the uh, series of lecture that we are conducting sa subject natin polygraphy or lie detection techniques well a, a little bit of, of background with regards to the use of polygraph testing now um we we always think of criminal investigation when when we talk about uh, polygraphy na pag pag sinabi nating uh, polygraph minsan naisip natin na madalas nating ginagamit ito sa criminal investigation but of course that's one of the main uh, purpose of conducting polygraph examination isa yan sa pinaka uh, pangunahing purpose kung bakit tayo nagkakandak ng polygraph examination but uh, I would like to go deeper into it no? kasi aside from criminal investigation or aside from uh, interrogation or uh, interview we have also other uh, other fields where the polygraph examination is being conducted no? So before we start, we have here the learning objectives. No? We have uh, two objectives in this uh, specific lecture. We have to for you to be enough for for you to be familiar on the different uses of polygraph testing, and uh, for you also to be familiar with the classification of clinical testing. This is one of the uh, area kung saan uh, ginagamit ang polygraph examination, and I would like to. Uh, I would like you to to be familiarized with with uh, the different classification under the clinical testing that na we natin. So we have here the general uses of polygraph services. We have uh, of course criminal investigation, that's the main. We have also employment and security screening and clinical setting. Um, there are other fields, siguro na na gumagamit din ng polygraph examination for other purposes but uh, for for classification purposes we're just going to be talking about these three area na usually nag nag uh, adapt or gumagamit ng polygraph services natin no? so let us talk about them one by one we have here the uh, criminal investigation so pag sinabi natin criminal investigation uh, it is where the, the concept of lie detection is being used in order for, for us to uh, better uh, understand the concept of lying. Di ba yung pinag-uusapan natin with regards to the different methods that are being adopted in order to uh, detect lie. So under criminal investigation, I, I have listed here the different goals of using polygraph service in criminal investigation. Ano nga ba yung purpose ng uh, paggamit ng polygraph services sa field ng criminal investigation? Then uh, we have here number one, number one or letter A, one of the main purpose of conducting a polygraph testing under criminal investigation is para ma-verify natin yung mga statements na binibigay ng witness, suspects, or yung victims. Well, in, in criminal investigation, we're dealing with these three individuals, no? three uh, group of uh, person. Usually, they're classified as either uh, he is a witness, a suspect, or a victim. So, lahat sila may kanya-kanyang version of, of the story. When, when we're going to conduct interview, to, to the witness, pag tinanong natin siya kung ano yung uh, na, nakita niya, ano yung nangyari, he will have his own version of uh, the story. Na? Meron siyang sariling um, version kung, kung paano niya ipaliwanag, kung paano niya i-describe kung ano yung nangyari dun sa specific incident which is often a crime. And the suspect has its own version also. That is why pag, pag in-interview natin, by the way, uh, this is just a strategy na ginagawa ng uh, investigator. No? When they're conducting interview to these individuals, they should be interviewed separately. Dapat magkakahiwalay sila. Dapat hindi naririnig yung, yung 
ni ni witness yung yung uh, narration ni suspect and at the same time uh, yung narration ni victim uh, ganun din so hindi dapat separate sila kasi nga para hindi ma hindi natin para ma- makita natin yung pagkakaiba ano kasi kung kung naririnig niya yung naririnig halimbawa ni suspect yung testimony ni witness yung kwento niya yung version niya pwedeng mangyari diyan is maimpluwensyahan din yung kanyang perception that's why they they should be separated now since sabi nga natin may kanya-kanyang version uh, ang mga taong ito sa sa nangyari so it is important for the criminal investigator to identify kung sino nga ba sa kanila yung nagsasabi ng totoo or kung kaninong version yung talagang totoo. And that is when the concept of polygraph examination will come in. Comes in. Uh, importante ang polygraph examination sa field sa sa part ng criminal investigation na to, sa verification of statement para alam natin kung sino sa mga taong ito yung talagang nagsasabi ng totoo. Kasi nga sabi natin The, the criminal investigation is really a battle of truth and lies. No? And uh, for us to be equipped sa, sa gera ng kasinungalingan at katotohanan na ito, uh, we can adopt the concept of cre- uh, polygraph examination for us to, to make the process easier. No? And another purpose of criminal in, uh, another purpose of conducting polygraph examination and criminal investigation is to de- uh, to determine the involvement of one person to a certain crime. Dito, um, we are not yet identifying whether the person is guilty or or not guilty. Ang ang tinitingnan lang natin dito is does this person, ito bang taong ito, has uh, some involvement to to the crime involved no so let's say for example meron meron tayong mga suspects no yung mga pinagsususpetsahan nating tao then uh, what we wanted to do is to invite them na no? imbitahin natin sila for for interview now of course they will they will provide statements they will provide alibis and so on and and uh, because of that there is again a necessity for us to identify which among these individuals are really telling the truth No? And if it happens no, na merong isa sa kanila na or isa or dalawa or ilan man sa kanila ang uh, lumabas na nagsisinungaling under the polygraph examination, then we can uh, go deeper into it. No? Pwede nating laliman pa yung pag investiga at pwede nating sigurong ma- ma- malaman or ma-identify kung yung taong yan ay uh, may kinalaman ba doon sa crime na nakumit. No? So that is also one of the significant um, contribution, significant things that polygraph examination may contribute under criminal investigation. Ma magkakaroon tayo ng madaling paraan kung kung paano natin malaman kung yung taong uh, inimbestigahan natin ay meron kayang kinalaman or may may uh, may alam kaya doon sa crime na na commit. So even ano, even even we're dealing with with witness kasi sometimes there are those uh, criminals na napaka napaka tawag natin doon, um, aggressive nila na they are even trying to uh, manipulate investigator by testifying, no? Testifying. So parang minsan uh nag-expect tayo na may mga ganung mangyari na kumbaga yung yung mismong nag-commit ng crime siya pa yung unang magre-report sa police uh, about the crime that was committed so para siguro the the, motiv- uh, the motivation probably for this is para ilayo sa kanya yung yung suspicion kasi siya nga naman yung unang nag-report so even though no uh, we we should uh, let them undergo polygraph examination still kasi nga, pwedeng meron tayong makuhang impormasyon or detalye na pwedeng magdiin sa kanya or magsangkot sa sa taong yan doon sa crime na nakumit. So, that's also one of the benefits of conducting polygraph examination. Uh, the third one is we have to expedite the investigation process. No? Um, in in my previous video i explained already how this thing works no sabi nga natin masyado ng maraming population and you know the the uh, anong nangyayari pag tumataas ang population natin of course 
more population, more crimes are being committed, more individuals are being accused of a crime, more individuals are being suspected of committing a crime. So, um, we are dealing with numerous number of of suspects and criminals every day. Da? So, how are we going to deal with it? Kasi mahirap yan. Before you can eliminate somebody as a suspect, you should have conducted a very detailed background investigation in order uh, for for your action of eliminating a certain person as a suspect be justified. Kailangan meron ka talagang matibay na basihan kung bakit mo inalis sa mga pinagsususpechahan yung isang tao na yan. So, I think the, the use of polygraph examination will help into this. No? Sabi nga natin, kung meron kang sampu na suspect, uh, it is expected that you're going to conduct individual assessment or or background check on, on these different suspects before you can eliminate them as suspects. So, mahirap yun. Malaking trabaho yun. So, what happens now if uh, every every day merong nadadagdag na kaso, every day may nadadagdag na suspect. So, lumalaki ang backlog ng law enforcement agencies in, in conducting investigation if this happen. So, by the uh, aid of polygraph examination, I think this is very um, helpful in the field of criminal investigation kasi nga mas mapapadali nito yung investigation process. Especially in determining uh, who among the suspects has um has uh you know merong merong possible uh involvement doon sa crime na inimbestigahan so the the use of polygraph examination will have that effect no mas mapapadali nito ang investigation process kasi nga uh we are using a scientific tool and then we are using a scientific procedure and i think the the result of the examination is conclusive if all of the uh, guidelines and procedures and basics of polygraph or conducting polygraph examination was followed no given ha, given na nasunod lahat ng mga proseso at yung yung uh, expected natin na no? yung yung criteria natin are met by the examiner or the examination process and even the machine that was used. So, uh, that is the effect of having polygraph also in the field of criminal investigation. And lastly, we have here to efficiently eliminate, not to efficiently eliminate wrongfully accused individuals from prosecution and identify the guilty part, uh, guilty party and bring him to justice. So, this is related also to letter C, wherein uh, we're expediting, pinapadali natin yung investigation process, and at the same time, na-eliminate natin efficiently yung mga taong napagsuspechahan or maling taong napagsuspechahan or maling taong nadamay, nadawit doon sa isang krimen. And uh, with that, we can efficiently identify also kung sino sa mga suspects natin ang talagang merong, kin uh, merong involvement doon sa crime na inimbestigahan natin. So those, uh, these are the different significance uh, or goals of using polygraph service and criminal investigation. I, I know there's a lot more probably that will be added into this, but at least we have here a, a broad idea already on, on what are the benefits of using polygraph examination uh, it, it can bring to criminal investigation. So it's important to, that we talk about also today. So remember all of this we have here. One of the goal is to verify statements coming from the witness suspects and or victims. And we have also to determine the involvement of a certain person and so on. So those are the, the goals of conducting polygraph examination in criminal investigation. Let us proceed to the two application of polygraph uh, in criminal investigation. There are often times wherein there is a confusion between the role of, of the use of polygraph examination in uh, criminal investigation. Medyo nagkakalituhan sometime tayo dito kasi nga, uh, are we using polygraph examination as, as, uh, as a way of determining the guilt 
or are we using it for other purposes? That is why we have uh, they have classified the two application of polygraph in criminal investigation and we have diagnostic and interrogatory. So polygraph examination can be applied also as a form of diagnost uh, as in a form of diagnostic application. No? So pwedeng gamitin natin ang concept ng ang, ang polygraph examination in a diagnostic manner. Ibig sabihin, we are trying to oh, we're trying to determine muna if this statement is indeed true. So under diagnostic application, ang ang purpose dito na no? ang purpose ng pagconduct ng investig uh, polygraph examination if we are using diagnostic application is to determine the truth. No? alamin kung ang statement ba na binigay ni suspect, binigay ni witness, binigay ni accused, uh, binigay ni uh, victim is the truth. Kasi nga, dinadiagnose mo lang siya if there are symptoms of lying. No? So, ang, ang tinitignan mo lang dito kung meron bang pagsisinungaling onto the part of the subject. So, dinadiagnose mo lang siya. Bakit mo kailangang i-diagnose? Of course, that is already the base of the investigation. So if if it appears that uh, after after conducting the polygraph examination on diagnostic application, no, in in the diagnostic form, it appears na yung subject mo is lying. So what what is the implication? Ano ano yung pwedeng ibig sabihin niyan? Ano yung pwedeng mong maging interpretation in that sense, no? Uh, are you going to uh, let him go? No, Hay hayaan mo na lang ba siya? Na okay, so it it appears that you are lying. So what what will uh, be your next move in into that? So yun ba yung diagnostic? Ganon yung diagnostic. I diagnose mo mo na siya, and your uh, your the the result of the diagnostic examination, diagnostic polygraph examination will be the basis of the for uh, of of the of a further investigation process or a for, further uh, examination process that should be conducted. So that's the concept of diagnostic application. Alamin lang natin kung meron bang pagsisinungaling or meron bang kasinungalingan sa, sa mga statement na binigay ni suspect, ni witness, or ni victim during the polygraph examination proceedings. And the other, no, so after diagnostic, we have the interrogatory application. Under interrogatory application, ang focus na nito is no longer the truth. No? Kasi tapos na yan eh. Uh, kung nandito ka na sa part na ito, kung nandito ka na sa application na ito, it means that you have already established that the person is hiding something and he is being untruthful. So yung mga nag... nag uh, nag-positive under diagnostic application or polygraph di diagnostic polygraph examination will proceed to interrogatory application. Na? So, halimbawa, sinalang ako for polygraph examination, then ang, ang ina-identify muna if whether I have an involvement to the crime, whether my statements are, are truth or lies. So, if it appears that I am lying and it appears that you know, I have some involvement siguro kasi nga nag, nag, naging uh, positive eh. Ibig sabihin parang uh, may signs ako of being deceptive. So ako ngayon yung, yung magtutuloy for interrogatory application. No? It's another form of conducting polygraph examination wherein the focus is no longer to identify the truth but rather to seek uh, to seek confession. So, yung mga questioning natin dito, iba na kumpara doon sa diagnostic application. Wherein, the focus under interrogatory application is that para magkumpisal, umamin yung subject sa kasalanan na kanyang ginawa. So, yun yung pagkakaiba. And both of this application of polygraph examination is being conducted. But of course, it is very much... Um, important that we need to identify kung are we going to be conducting a polygraph examination in a diagnostic application or in an interrogatory application kasi there is a certain goal that we should set and the goal that has been set will be the basis of coming up with strategies or 
coming up with the list of questions that you are going to be asking during the conduct of polygraph examination. Okay, so that is the two application of polygraph examination in criminal investigation. Now, we, let us proceed to the other use of, of polygraph examination or polygraph, uh, polygraph services. And we have here the employment for employment and security screening. Actually, uh, the purpose of pre-employment screening is to determine una, whether the applicant is being truthful, na? specifically regarding his or her application, uh, all of the data that has been written or encoded in his application form like like for example uh, let's say for example uh i i have an application form and i stated that i graduated as uh i graduated uh, as a cum laude probably na so pwedeng ilagay ko yun sa po uh, sa ano ko I, I i may write that to to uh, the my application form despite not having those uh, qualification or eligibility. Meron kasing mga ganito. We cannot really say that uh, ngayon, they can no longer do it. Kasi uh, the, the basis of, of all the claims that you're making under your application form, no? pag nag apply ka, are papers. No? So, if you have diploma to prove that you're a graduate of a certain course, of a certain college uh, degree, and if you have a certificate that proves that you graduated cum laude, you have proof for that, then there's no problem with regards to those. No, they, they might accept that as, as uh, an evidence already. But of course, we cannot deny the fact that may possibility kasi na ma, ma forge itong mga documents na ito. No? So sometimes, yung mga companies, yung mga agencies are becoming strict with with regards to their uh, employment selection to to their uh, selection process and that is why sometimes they uh, utilize yung yung tinatawag nating uh, polygraph examination for for the purpose of screening uh, the applicants if if they're being truthful or if they have you no know, history of of uh, uh, that that will be a problem in in their in the job that they're trying to apply at now so we, we we usually have the the following questions now ito usually yung mga tinatanong under uh, pre-employment screening yung mga like employment history no kasi may tendency na yung mga yung nag-applicante magsisinungaling tungkol sa sa kanyang maging naging uh, past na trabaho or also now, this is also important, yung mga credits, yung mga pagkakautang ng isang tao, why, why would you even ask about that? Na? Well, uh, there is an implication kasi na pwedeng makaapekto ang, ang mga past credits or malaking credits no? or whatever it is doon sa magiging performance and attitude or behavior ni employee uh, doon sa kanyang magiging trabaho. So, ito yung mga tinitignan nila. So, we have also yung mga driving records, no? kung meron mga siya mga drive, uh, traffic violations and so on, that is indicative of, you know, good behavior, I think. No? Yung mga ganyan. Drug use, alcohol use, or history of falsification of information, or have been, um, you know, involved into some criminal activities, or have been associated with uh, criminal organization or criminals and so on. So, yun yung mga tinitignan or tinatanong nila under pre-employment uh, test no? or screening test. And as you can see, importante kasi itong mga to kasi they are indicative of good behavior and they are indicative of, of you know, yung, yung magiging attitude or yung magiging... Um, efficiency ni employee doon sa kanyang magiging trabaho just in case. However, um, it is important to to note that this is not mandatory and this is not uh, required for uh, to be to be hired at a specific uh, job. No? Meron lang kasi yung mga exemption for this. No? So, not to discriminate anyone na halimbawa ayaw niyang sumalang sa polygraph examination or ayaw niyang mag-undergo ng 
uh, pre-employment screening with the use of the polygraph machine, not to discriminate them from being hired. So we ha we don't have laws that mandates that all employee, no, that all applicants should undergo polygraph testing. No? And there are limitations also doon sa mga pwedeng itanong sa kanya. Halimbawa, hindi mo pwedeng tanungin sa sa employee na sa applicant na yan uh, during the conduct of polygraph testing yung mga related sa sa kanyang political belief yung yung sa religion and so on so those are um, the limitations na now sino ba usually yung gumagamit ng pre-employment screening with the use of polygraph examination Usually, these are yung mga tinatawag nating uh, agencies related to security and, you know, related to uh, law enforcement. So, uh, sa, sa atin, sa, sa Pilipinas, we don't have, um, I think, I'm not sure if they're applying this in law enforcement organization, whether they're requiring uh, polygraph testing as as a uh, way or as as one of the procedures that must be accomplished by an aspiring applicant to to who would be joining uh, whichever law enforcement organization he want to join no so I, i'm not sure kasi i think wala pa naman so far ang nag-employ nito i don't know with regards to promotion process if they are using polygraph examination to screen out possible uh, problems sa mga prino promote na mga officers and so on but uh, if they will be using polygraph testing as a means of screening, you know, as a, as a way of screening uh, possible problem, uh, especially sa mga papasok pa lang or sa mga nagpapapromo, kasi they, they will be given bigger responsibility so that they should be capable or emotionally fit and mentally fit to perform the job. So if if in case they will be mandating this I think they will be exempted no I think it will be acceptable if they are going to mandate the use of polygraph testing as a as a form of screening applicants and as a form of screening yung mga nagpapapromote kasi they are in the law enforcement field no? so you can probably reduce the numbers of scalawags if they are conducting this on a regular basis Okay. Now, uh, there are private companies, however. Now, th this may apply also to all public agency. Uh, public, yes, yung mga agencies of uh, owned by the government, such as we have Bureau of Custom, no, uh, Bureau of Correction, uh, DPWH, PhilHealth. Yung mga yan. Why not? Why not uh, adapt this also? I'm not really sure if they're adapting, but I think by adapting this way of screening no sa mga papasok pa lang or sa mga na pro promote or nabibigyan ng ng uh, designation and so on they can probably identify yung mga capable and then yung mga merong problem na pwedeng idulot sa isang organization but of course that that goes with you know, dapat yung yung employ yung yung nagkakandak ng polygraph examination must be incorruptible. Kasi nga, uh, regardless if you have this, like for example, regular uh, drug testing that they're conducting in law enforcement uh, organization, if yung mga nagkakandak naman ng tests are not incorruptible, then still, wala pa rin. Na? So, if if they will be adopting this, they should have a separate, you know, agency involved in in conducting examination na, na walang bias, kumbaga. So the, so that the result will really be uh, the truth. Okay? Now, um, exemption, kasi sabi natin, this may apply to government agencies. Like, for example, in United States, they're using this for, for applicants of, of the FBI. Uh, they're using this sa mga, yan, sa mga tinatawag nating ano, uh, law enforcement uh, organizations such as in fire departments, the departments, no? sa sa mga correctional institution nila, yun yung mga hina, inaalaw nilang magkandak ng or mag-require ng polygraph testing as as a pre-employment uh, screening, no? so they are uh, 
they are allowed to conduct or adopt the, con uh, the conduct of polygraph testing. However, in our country, no, and uh, wala namang law nagmamandate, but just in case they will think of using that. And also, if if uh, sa mga private companies naman, there are exemptions to this. And uh, private companies may also use polygraph testing as a way of of uh, screening their employees. Da? If they are involved in, like for example, sa mga manufacturing industry, no? uh, especially sa mining companies, you know, mining kasi it's, it's gold. It's a big temptation, ano? You don't know, while they're mining, pwede silang magbulsa dyan ng konting, konting piraso ng uh, ginto na namamine nila. So, they're using also, they are excused or they are allowed to use the concept of polygraph testing sa pag-hire at sa pag-evaluate ng performance ng mga employee nila. Kasi they're, they're in, in a business which is yung highly tempting, kumbaga, such as for example, nagtratrabaho ka sa banko, yes, you may adapt the conduct of annual polygraph examination just to check if if your employee are still an asset to your organization or to your company. No? So, may mga exemption yun depende doon sa nature ng business, nature ng companies na kung saan uh, pwede silang ma-exempt under the law na nagsasabing um, you cannot mandate this process as a way of screening your your employee or determining potential problem no? so etong mga to like like the bank bank uh, yung mga philippine banks yung mga uh, mining companies yung mga ganun, yung mga manufacturing companies they are exempted to this so if they opt to use polygraph examination to check on their employee na no? pwede nilang gawin yan Okay, so let's proceed to clinical testing. No? So under clinical testing, we have here the different form of clinical testing. We have disclosure testing, maintenance testing, specific testing. I would like to point out that uh, under clinical testing, ginagamit ito guys sa, mga, sa, sa cases like, like for example, sa mga isa subject for parole, yung mga mabibigyan ng parole, mabibigyan ng pardon, or mabibigyan ng probation, Etong clinical testing na ito is used to determine whether the the subject yung yung tao na bibigyan ng mga you know yung mga correctional uh, treatment or or to be specific yung mga tinatawag nating community based correctional treatment will really benefit na if they will be given with such form of treatment. So bago mo bigyan yung isang tao ng yung yung tinatawag nating community based correctional treatment like probation. Bago mo bigyan yung isang tao ng probation, kailangan muna nating i-assess, no? I-assess if talaga nga bang magiging uh, compliant itong tao na to pag nabigyan siya ng probation, will he obey or follow all of the rules and regulations and conditions that will be given to him by the government if nabigyan siya o ano, grant yung kanyang request of having probation, of having parole, or being pardoned. So, yan yung purpose ng clinical testing natin. So, we have the first one which has uh, which is the disclosure testing. Actually, meron tayong iba't ibang form of disclosure testing such as yung testing focus on sexual history. Uh, specifically, kung ang, ang subject natin is a sexual offender, no? kailangan muna nating malaman yung talagang status niya when it comes to sexual preference, sexual history, baka kasi meron pa siyang mga tinatagong mga sexual offenses na hindi pa natin alam. And of course, that's very dangerous kung bigla mong pinakawalan yung isang tao na sexual maniac pala, may, man may sexual deviancy pala. So there's a possibility na pwedeng mag ito ng uh, future crime or future violation to all the condition sets to, to his correctional treatment. No? So, under sexual history, ang tinatarget nating ma-evaluate dito is yung potential ni subject na mag-violate pa ng mga offenses that are, are probably related to sexual offenses. No? Or meron pa ba siyang mga tinatago na 
na mga you know tendencies na at uh, yung tendencies ba na yan will become a problem na will become a problem to him pag nag uh, undergo siya ng probation parole or even pardon na so that's under the sexual history we have also current offense under current offense it is expected by the way na kapag binibigyan na siya ng parole probation or even pardon there is a crime that has been involved to him na meron ng crime na kung saan siya ay nai-involve. So, under the current offense testing, it, it's a way of determining what are the other undisclosed information no? na, na hindi pa niya nasasabi. Mind you, meron kasi yung mga tao na kahit na nabigyan na ng death penalty, hindi pa rin naamin. So, the, the denial, the denial thing. So, bakit nga ba sila nagde-deny? No? It can be that number one, maybe it's really the truth na wala siyang kinalaman or wala siyang alam sa krimen na na, uh, na isang na kinasangkutan niya or hindi naman kaya is he is just really you know pathological liar or meron lang talaga siyang uh, dis behavioral disorder na tinatawag so under the current offense uh, testing we are trying to identify kung meron pa yung mga um, information na hindi pa na disclose ng ng subject natin during his trial or during his prosecution. So that's with regards to current offense. We have also the assessment test wherein the polygraph examiner is assessing whether the yung, yung subject natin has, you know, a risk, no? uh, has a potential risk that, that can be uh, brought by giving him or releasing him to the community, di ba? Bago mabigyan ng bigyan ng probation bago mo pakawalan yung isang isang tao through the uh, through the benefit of probation na it is necessary that we should you know assess first kung talaga nga bang magiging kapakipakinabang yung yung treatment process na ito para sa kanya kasi baka mamaya binigyan mo siya ng probation later on wala pang one month nag-commit na naman siya ng crime so yun yung mga iniiwasan natin that's why they are conducting yung mga tinatawag nating assessment test under the clinical uh, test that they're conducting using polygraph examination. Uh, we have here the maintenance testing. Yung maintenance testing, yung tinatawag natin periodic, uh, periodic testing when we're in there usually conducting a, a periodic polygraph examination to determine whether uh, may, may vinayulate ba yung, yung probationer natin. A probationer may binayulate ba yung probation ni natin, yung parole ni natin, o yung pardon ni natin, na? yung taong nirelease natin through the benefit of the uh, correct, um, community-based correctional treatment ay naging masunurin nga ba na? Sa, sa lahat ng conditions na binibigay sa kanya or hindi. So, usually kinakanda kang maintenance testing to... Uh, in a in a span of you know every 4 to 6 months usually so yan yung pamamaraan natin para ma-identify if uh, nagiging beneficial nga ba yung correctional treatment na binibigay sa sa taong yan or hindi kasi baka mamaya uh, yes hindi natin walang nairereport nakakarating sa atin na nagva-violate si si probation probationy ng any condition sa kanyang probation pero yun pala is pasikreto niyang ginagawa lahat so that's important no para malaman din natin kung uh, sumusunod pa nga ba siya pa rin ba siya sa mga conditions na na set during or on his uh, probation then we have also the last one which is the specific test under specific testing uh, nagkakaroon tayo dito ng specific problem no Yung, yung testing natin is focus on a specific problem. Like for example is may nag-report na yung isang tao na, na, na under probation ay nakitang gumagamit ng drugs. So that's an issue. Ano? Kasi of course that, that's a violation, uh, that's a clear violation of, of the terms and conditions of his probation. So uh, in order to verify whether the accusation or the allegation is indeed true, kasi mahirap namang maniwala agad-agad nang wala tayong enough evidence to prove whether yung allegation sa kanya na nagdradrag siya ay totoo. So we are going to be conducting a polygraph testing based on that specific problem, drug use. 
no? or alcohol use, or hindi naman kaya domestic abuse. Ganun. So if there is a specific problem that needed to be verified, whether is it true or is it not, then we are conducting a specific testing, the polygraph examination. Okay? So uh, those are the uses of polygraph examination, not only in, in criminal investigation, but also in other areas wherein pwede nating paggamitan ng polygraph examination. So I do hope meron tayong natutunan for that lecture. If you have question with, uh, with regards to this, don't hesitate to ask question. No, I, I know meron pa tayong mga hindi nabanggit. Um, if there are clarification, don't, uh, don't be shy to ask them on the comment section. So I guess that's it for today. See you guys on the next lecture.